Hey guys, welcome back to Princess Connect. In today's video, we're going to be doing a beginner's guide to team building. This is more directed at free to play. We will cover replacement heroes and stuff like that, but just to get you pointed in the right direction so that you're building a solid team core to progress you through the campaign, because you don't want to be building too many units at the start because mana gets pretty intensive. So let's get into it. Okay, so the base team we're going to look at, I like to have one tank optimally. Um, some people like two. I prefer the one tank method and then just try and train them down. So I normally like having a tank and then a support buffer, someone that's going to, you know, give you the attack buffs, defense buffs, anything like that um, to really help the team that you have out. And then I do like to have a really strong DPS um, carrying it. And those are the three core members of the team. And then the last two I leave interchangeable um, depending on what you have and what you've pulled. It's really going to be very different. So what we're going to do first is take a look at the one and two star options uh, for these positions. And then towards the end of the video, we'll talk about uh, some of the three star replacements that you can use for the team. So start off with the free to play type team and then move into, you know, what select units you might have got from your reroll or from lucky summons. So starting off with the tank. Uh, my tank here is going to be Miyako. She is a fantastic physical tank. Um, decent at magic tanking as well. Just an all-round good tank. Best free-to-play tank in my opinion when you count it as one and two stars um, for the early game. Now skills, basically she's got two abilities that are going to heal herself and then one that's going to give her immunity to damage. Really, really strong. Not much support for her teammates, but really strong in that tanking position. So she's the one that I use. If you do not have her, she is a two star. So some people actually save a lot of their resources and I'll go through this in another video, but save all your diamonds basically for future banners because there are exclusive banners in this game and stuff like that. So a lot of people are going to be playing through with not many characters. So if you don't have some of the two stars, a replacement for her is going to be Peck. Now, Peck is good because one, you start with her, two, easily farmable from hard mode stages, uh, and then she's basically got a physical and magical defense uh, mitigation and a heal to herself. So not too bad in that sense. And then on top of that, she does have this one here, which isn't great. The final skill, just dealing damage, if this was another support or uh, tank based skill, I feel like she would be much stronger. However, they have put her with an attack skill, which isn't the most valuable thing for her to have. But she is definitely a replacement that you can use if you don't have um, the Miyako. I always forget her name. But Miyako number one, uh, peck number two, there are some three star tanks, which we'll go into later. Um, now next for the DPS, for me, the DPS, the main DPS slot in your team as a free to play being one and two stars has to be Suze. Suze is fantastic. Got two, two abilities that are guaranteed to crit and then one that's gonna boost her attack. It's so, like, if you look at the damage she does compared to any other unit in the early game, due to the fact that she's guaranteed to crit, it's ridiculous. Um, it's basically because, like, all the units have such low base crits in the early game, like 10 to 15% crit rate, and she's guaranteed to crit, plus she's got a self-attack buff. She does heaps of damage, basically is what it comes down to. Best attacker option, in my opinion. Now, some replacements that you can look at is something like Eriko. Uh, she's got this skill where she's going to deal some massive damage. Um, and if she kills an enemy, she gets an attack buff. From what I can see, the attack buff looks like about a 50% attack buff, which ain't too bad. Uh, I think she has a poison and something else, but just a really decent attacker as well. Another decent DPS, but doesn't really work at the moment, is going to be Corey. Uh, now, the reason she doesn't work is because if we look at her positioning, she actually goes to the front row. Uh, meaning she's going to be attacked first and pretty much just get shredded. So if in the future they do fix this up, she could definitely be an option for damage. But at the moment, she just doesn't quite fit uh, due to going to the front and just basically not letting your tanks protect her. And the final option for a DPS that I, I would look to uh, is going to be uh, Mifuyu. She is a midline, but she's got a self heal and she's got two attacks that deal stun, which is nice. The control is going to be nice. And also when you get the, the enemies that lob attacks to the mid row, she's going to take them and be able to heal herself. So not too bad. But basically those other two uh, being the Mifuyu and the Eriko, um, those are going to be like my options for secondary DPS. You, Suze is really hard to pass up on. So hopefully you guys could summon Suze. If not, they can be replacements. 
Anyway, moving on from that, we're going to look at buff the buffer slash support. Um, basically, a decent support here is going to be the co 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 co. We'll call it co. Co is nice because you do start with her, easy to farm shards for once again. Um, we're going to increase physical and magical attack and also heal herself. Once again, mid row, some of those mid row lobbers, she's going to be able to heal herself, which is nice to keep herself alive when she's taking some of that damage. Um, she's got this tri slash, which is very average. If she had another support skill, she'd probably be better, but hey, she's got damage. And then she also has a small boost to attack speed and physical attack for all allies. So nice buffer there. She's got two, two buffing abilities, one with the self heal for herself, and she's easy to farm shards for, so she can slot in that position nicely. Now, continuing with support slash healing, uh, we do have Yui. Um, now, Yui isn't too bad. Once again, another one of those units that you do start off with. She has the group heal. She has uh, a boost to physical defense. And then she also does have this magic attack. Now, in all the other ones, I don't like it when they have like the damage based skill. But because magic damage dealers aren't as common, uh, most of the good ones are physical. This can be nice against some enemies that are very physically resistant. So that can be nice. The group heal is trash early game, like absolutely trash. If you've used her in early game, you know it is. It does get better as you go. Um, but, you know, she's not a bad option if you have no others uh, for healing. However, there is a better option in my opinion, and that is going to be yukari now i love yukari the, she's absolutely great so she's got some magic resistance for your whole team not as many magic uh enemies that you do fight but nice when you come up and get them against them because you're going to mitigate some damage she also has a single target heal now this is much better in my opinion for most uh enemies than the aoe heal it heals for about twice as much as an aoe heal and the cool thing about it is it's going to target the weakest ally and normally you've only got one or two allies that are getting weak um so you can really just tune in on that one ally and heal them up for a decent amount and then she also has moonlight which covers the tp of the ally with the lowest tp getting you towards your um your union bursts faster so she is a really really nice unit to have in there as well and i would love having her in that slot so this is basically the team that i would use um if i was completely free to play and had really bad pulls um two of them are your starter units you've got another one star and then you do have the two star suits who is very important in my opinion and then that last slot you really do want to have another dps in my personal opinion i feel like bursting them down is really important um, so getting that damage can be nice. And then if you do have another unit that's a buffer slash damage, it can be really nice. So, or support slash damage. So for me, um, like I can use something like, uh, I can use Monica because she does have a buff as well for attack and speed and stuff like that. She's a bit better. She's a three star that I did pull. She would replace that support. And then in that last spot, I can still put another attacker and I can get some really good damage out of it. But basically, this would be my free to play team. And then if I had to choose another DPS, I would probably slot her in there. I would slot Eriko in because she's another really strong unit in my opinion. Or like I said, when I looked at my other ones, Mifuyu, she could throw in there as well. And that would be the basic look of my team if I was completely free to play. The way my actual team looks at the moment when we look through those roles is going to be my tank, then I have my main supporter right there, then I have my buffer right there, and then I have another support slash magical DPS, and then I have my main physical DPS there. So that is how my team does look. But as you can see, I normally go with a tank, one or two support, and then two or three DPS. Sometimes I will drop one of these supports like this and maybe bring some more damage if I want to burst through it. But a standard tank, one or two support, two or three uh, DPS normally works fine. There are some different team compositions you can build, but that is a good basic one to get you going along the way. Now I want to take a look at some three stars to keep an eye out for. We're not going to go too deep into it. Uh, Nozomi or Nozomi, however you want to say it, really good tank. We've got this, taunts all enemies, moderate boost to own physical and magical defense, small boost to physical attack for all allies. You know, that's doing a lot. Then she's got this one. It's an AoE stun, which is really strong. And then we also have HP recovery for all allies that are near her. Really going to be nice. Nice with uh, more physical-based allies who group up with her, but just a great all-round tank in the game at the moment. Um, moving on from that for healer, we do have Maho. Maho is a fantastic healer. We've got this small boost to magical attack and physical defense 
for all allies and recovers TP by a small amount. Once again, doing a lot with that ability, which is really nice for a buff. We've got this recover HP of the party member with the lowest HP by a moderate amount. Those single target heals I really do like. And then we also have a blind, which is also going to be very valuable for mitigating some damage. So she's the one for a healer. Um, and then for some more support, we do have Shizuru, who's a bit of a combo tank DPS support type thing. Um, normally she does position behind other tanks from what I've seen, which works well for her. She's got this, deals large physical damage to an enemy directly in front, deploys a barrier around oneself that absorbs physical damage. Nice bit of physical damage plus mitigation right there. Then we've got recovers the HP of the party member with the lowest HP by a moderate amount. Once again, those single target heals I really do enjoy. And then we have a barrier that negates physical damage around nearby allies. Once again, mitigation, really good support. So she's another not bad one to keep an eye out for. And then when we look at DPS, there's one key unit that a lot of people will be going for. And that is going to be Makoto. The reason being, she's got so much physical defense reduction uh, for the enemies. Uh, she's very unique in that sense, and a lot of people will be re-rolling for her, so she's a good one to slot into your team. Doesn't scale as well in the early game, but moving into the later game, she will scale much better. So she's got two single target attacks that deal decent damage, and then we've got two abilities that reduce the enemy's defense. So really strong. I'm probably, when I start a fresh account at the global launch, I will probably re-roll for her and go for her like that. But basically, any other DPS that you do ro roll for can help out. And a couple other supports, like I showed earlier, that I do use myself. Uh, Monica, reason being, she does have this buff, boost of physical and magical attack um, and action speed to all allies. Also has a stun, which is nice, and some AoE damage. And then we have EO, which has this nice charm, really good support. It doesn't deal much damage, makes the enemies attack themselves, which adds extra damage dealt in on that sense, but also gives some mitigation to your team because they will be attacking themselves. We've got a little bit of AoE damage here, and then we also have some TP stealing from the enemy, which can be really nice as well. That pretty much covers it for three stars, but basically if you pull any other three star, check it out. If it's DPS, you can normally slot it into that last spot on the team. Even if it's to tank, maybe you can run double tank or just replace your tank and take another two star DPS in. That's the basic gist. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I'll look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.